Hello everyone and welcome back to my beloved Range Rover. I realise it's been well over a month since we've done anything with this on the channel and so a video update is long overdue. Now, 75% of you watching are not subscribed and so if you're not, I encourage you to do so now. And in fact, if you subscribe, like this video and leave a comment below, I'll give one of you guys a 25 pound Amazon voucher. Furthermore, if you want to make that 50 quid of Amazon vouchers, I'm gonna go and give away 25 pounds over on Instagram as well. So make sure you go and follow me over there. So the truth of the matter is that nothing has really happened to my Range Rover in the sense that I have just been using it almost every day. It costs an uh, absolute arm and a leg to run. However, I just completely adore it. So almost doesn't matter in that sense. It's awaiting some more work, which we'll be filming for YouTube and you guys will see all of that that's gonna be going on. But otherwise at the moment, it is very much usable and I've been loving it. So I thought it was time to do a video about that anyway, because it's a shame not to bring you guys along. I know how much you love this car. You can't love it as much as me, that's not possible. So why don't we take the car out for a little bit of a drive today? Gonna need to get it some fuel, obviously. That is uh, one issue with this car, let's say. But I'm keen to jump in and bring you guys with me because I think all we've done with this car so far is literally buying it, cleaning it, and then repairing it. Whereas today we can do a bit of enjoying it. So why don't you come with me and uh, have some fun. This is quite literally my favorite place in the entire world. I cannot explain it, but before I bought a Range Rover, loads of people said that there's just something about them that once you've driven a Range Rover or once you've owned a Range Rover, there's just an affiliation and a connection that you, you have with it that you can't really explain. And I have to confirm to those of you watching that uh, not owners or haven't experienced one for yourself, that is completely true. I have fallen head over for heels, head over for heels, head over heels for this car. I absolutely, absolutely adore it. So now I've just come out with my new sexuality for uh, cars. We can talk a little bit more about what's been going on. I cannot believe, honestly, that I paid 2,000 pounds for this. It really makes me smile when I think about that because it feels like so, so much more. Now, being totally honest, since I spent 2,000 pounds on this car back in, oh gosh, I don't even know when it was, maybe the spring of this year, I've definitely spent at least that, if not probably double, on fuel. Because to say that this thing drinks like a fish is an understatement. It drinks more like a Glaswegian student. And for those of you that don't understand that joke, that's a lot. That is a lot of fuel. Now, for those of you that know me, some people say I'm a little bit blase when it comes to money, and by that I mean I'm a little bit like, uh, you know, it's all right. Or if people say, oh, you know, what's the fuel economy like? Well, I just tell them, it's smiles per gallon, not miles per gallon. And I do stand by that. However, this is the first car I've ever owned where I've genuinely had to think in my head, is this sensible? Because honestly, uh, with fuel prices in the UK at the moment, this thing is 105 liters. The tank size is 105 liters. I only fill up with Super Juice or Super Unleaded, uh, which is probably at, on average around a, a pound 40 a liter. So if you do the maths, you're pretty quickly up to about 150 quid to fill this car up. And that's all well and good because it's 105 liters and so it lasts ages. No, no it doesn't. You can genuinely see the tank needle going. Mm. It's almost like you can hear it as you accelerate. Just gargling on that nice expensive fuel that I've put in it. It's quite remarkable actually, it's quite impressive. Being honest though, I've only been driving this thing literally around town and I mean, I've been loving it. I've basically been using this as the dog car, which is one of the main reasons I bought a Range Rover. We were getting a dog and I wanted something suitable for that purpose. And of course, this is the perfect car for that. So I've basically just been driving around town, not really exceeding 30 miles an hour at all. In fact, we're going to do that now, which is very unusual for me in this car. And so my average is 15.15.7 miles per gallon. So based on 105 litres, that's around 23, 24 gallons or so, uh, 15 miles per gallon, we're struggling to get 400 miles a tank. So it does go very quickly. 
Speaking of which, I'm gonna to drive to the petrol station now because I put half a tank in it yesterday and it's now below a quarter. Half a tank? I mean, that was 75 quid in a day. Yeah, um, it, it drinks fuel and it is the first time I've had to really sort of swallow my, my, swallow my words and just think to myself, yeah, is this actually necessary? But I come to the conclusion that no, it's not, but I don't care because I love this car. I've been standing here for about five minutes now and I get the feeling that the fuel isn't even touching the sides of the tank yet. Okay, precisely half a tank, 52 and a half litres, 74 pounds and one pence. So yeah, 150 quid to fill it. And wait for it. The car wants to, needle hasn't moved. Oh joy. So all people like to say uh, about this car really, and I, I get the impression it's people that don't actually own them. Although having said that, there'll be a few people that have had bad experiences. I do. Uh, respect that. Uh, but from what I've heard, this thing is about as trustworthy and reliable as Joe Biden, uh, which you can draw your own conclusions from. But I'm pleased to say, genuinely, and I wouldn't BS you because that's not really what I'm doing here. It's my own car. This thing has been great. Now, I found early on when I wasn't really using the car much, uh, maybe within maybe twice a week or something like that, I was using it. Every time I started the car up, I'd get transmission fail safe, warning this, warning that, HSIC inactive, God knows what else. But then all I did was simply put the car on trickle charge during the times I'm not using it. And genuinely since then, maybe two, three months I've been using this most, most weeks, but trickle charging the battery in between, I've had zero warnings, zero. The only warning I've had is low fuel uh, and that is on permanently. <laughs> but the car has just been superb. Now, of course, it has been to Richmond Land Rover and had, it's had new brakes. It had the oil gas, gaskets, gaskets done, amongst a few other things. And there is still a long list of things that need fixing on this. We're just struggling to work out some dates at the moment because we're just both very busy. Oh, look, there's an Airbus A380 there. That is almost the equivalent of this in a car. You know, those A380s are almost redundant now. They don't need four engines and they're a bit big. But, as I would probably say, and lots of other frequent travellers would say, most comfortable aircraft to travel on. Anyway, this isn't a plane channel, is it? Uh, so, yeah, the car has been superb, it has. Now, there's problems with the car because I would like to use this for more than running around to Bushy Park with the dog in the back. I would like to take this on some really long trips. I mean, shit, I'd like to attempt that John O'Groats to Land's End uh, thing again, but in this, I have got some long trips planned for it as well over the next few weeks, but there's a few issues with the car, which just are mechanical and need sorting. The tires are not great, and as some of you have noticed, the rear two are actually different. So you've got the front left and right and rear left are all on Michelin latitudes, I think, and then the rear right, or it might be the other way around, it might be the rear left, is actually a different Goodyear tire. So not great for the car. And as a result of that and a few other things, all of the tires seem to be worn unevenly, which means when I do take this above around 50 miles an hour, which I'll do now actually, you notice some vibrations in the wheel, which just makes it quite unpleasant to, to cruise in. So tires need sorting. I know that there's a load of suspension drop links and bushings that need replacing too. But in terms of oil leaking, I've not had to top this car up at all since the gaskets were done, so no oil leaks uh, whatsoever. I still have a coolant leak, which is coming from the radiator, and that is something that needs replacing by Richmond Land Rover as soon as they can. However, even with the relatively frequent use, I'm only having to top that up maybe once every 10 days to two weeks. So it's not really, really gushing out, it's just, spilling out when it's hot, I suppose. So minor, minor inconvenience that doesn't really stop me from using the car. But yeah, when we get some speed and let's just pop the transmission in sport mode. And I can't actually get up to 50 because of this fantastic traffic. We'll get some vibrations. So we'll go a little bit further so I can get up to motorway speed, which is 70. And I'll demonstrate it to you there.
Other than that, there's a few minor things, such as one of the speakers, I think, is blown. It's not the best in here. My electronic steering column has fully broken now. It was going in and out and not up and down, but when playing with it the other day, it's completely gone. You can hear the motor working away, but it's just doing nothing. And I also have the pixels display. It's all messed up in front of me here where I see the consumption and temperature and whatever else. But apart from that, it's just the air conditioning that needs sorting as well, which isn't really a problem now because it's about minus 10 in August in the UK. So we're all good. And I've been quite enjoying just driving this car with the windows closed. And yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now we're up to 55. You can see a little bit of a vibration in the wheel. And if we just go down a bit further, which I'm going to do now, we'll go up to 70 miles per hour. Um, you'll see that it gets a little bit worse. Gearbox in sport, let's just... Oh yeah. And would you believe it, we're doing 70 now, however I've got no vibration. As soon as I try and demonstrate anything on a video, the car doesn't do it. But let me just tell you why I love this car so much. And there, there's several reasons that are specific to me actually. Namely, I, well, I'm lucky enough to sort of experience and drive a lot of fast cars now from press, you know, manufacturers and stuff, which is uh, an unbelievably fortunate position to be in. But also my Z4, which is now sold, and my 7 Series are sort of sporty in, in the sense that they're quite powerful, or in the Z4's case, it's set up to feel quite fast, this, that, and the other. Now this, for whatever reason, when you're driving along, I'm doing 65 on a stretch of motorway that has no cameras, which is very unusual for me, but 65 just feels fast enough in this car. And so I love driving this because it, it calms me down. I feel like once I'm in the Range Rover, there's no rush to get anywhere. I've got you know my armchair with my adjustable armrests, and you just sort of waft along. And like I say, you feel like you're going faster than you are, or maybe it's just me. But I love driving this car because I drive it under the speed limit. And that is something that I thought I would never, ever appreciate or say. But sort of every other car I seem to drive or the other cars I own, is sort of, they want you to push on and they want you to drive fast. Whereas in this, it's the complete opposite. I just want to cruise along. Now, one of the reasons for that potential on the motorway is this. Now you can see we're doing 70 miles an hour. Let's just get up so we are doing 70. That's 70 now. And you can see a slight wobble in the wheel and I can feel a wobble under my feet as well. Now I don't do this often because I do need to get it sorted and I think this is probably largely due to the tyres being, well, knackered. So that'll be the next thing I'm keen to get sorted is the tyres and then hopefully we can enjoy this on some long journeys which I have planned for later on this month, it's now September. We have got uh, a couple of long trips with this car planned which of course I'll be bringing to you guys on YouTube. So if you enjoy the Range Rover content, fear not because there's a lot more coming over the coming weeks. Just bear with me while we get a few other bits sorted and I'll obviously fill you in with all the repairs and film as much of that as possible, as well as bring you along for some exciting trips over the next few weeks. And speaking of exciting trips, we're taking the 7 Series somewhere in a couple of weeks time, and I'll let you work out where that is. Very excited for that, and I know you guys are gonna love it. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to give that like button a smash, uh, which means click it. Some people say smash it, I don't really know why. Just, just click the like button if you're watching this right now because it just helps the videos get seen by more people. And the more people see uh, the videos, the more videos I'll be able to make, which I guess is a good thing, right? If you're watching this, you probably want to see more. And uh, likewise, if you're not subscribed and you're watching this right now, 75% of you apparently are in that situation. And um, so do just remember that I know where you live uh, if you decide that you don't want to subscribe. Of course, I'm joking, I don't know where you live, but I will murder you in your sleep nonetheless. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please, in the meantime, just ask away any questions below. 
on this video or head over to my Instagram and send me a direct message. I'll be more than happy to speak to you about this car or whatever it is you want to have a natter away about. So uh, I'm going to nurse this car back up the motorway now without too much wobble, hopefully, and then we're going to get it in for some repairs and get it out on some epic road trips. But for now, I thought it'd be great to just give you a little bit of an insight into how the car's been and how much I've been loving it. So guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon.